Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial we're going to take a look at render settings in After Effects. The first thing that we need to do is create a new comp. We can do that down here, or up at New Composition, or use the Control N shortcut. Um, when we're in here, we have a number of different presets that we can choose from. Do be aware that some of the ones at the top are old presets like NTSC, DV widescreen. These are great if you're going to DVDs and things like that, but typically we're going to be using the HDV and the HDTV settings. Now, there are a couple different settings in HDTV, I'm sorry, for both of them really. You've got the 720 and then you've got the 1080p and then you also have an HDV 1080p and I just want to point out which ones are kind of going on. The most common ones to use at least in America are going to be the HDV HDTV 720 that's 29.97 and if we click on that you'll see we have 1280 by 720 and we have square pixels. The other common one is the HDTV 1080 2997 and that's 1920 by 1080 using square pixels. The one that we want to be aware of that is not as common to use is the HDV 1080p. This one is only 1440 by 1080 and it's got a very severely stretched pixel at 1.33 pixel aspect ratio and that one is strange so I would typically not suggest that for most animations that you're creating. I'm going to use the 720-2097 because this is a good format um, for most projects that you're going to put online as well as for high def and of course if you want the best quality then I would go straight up to the 1080p version of this making sure that you're using square pixels. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my duration to just zero, um, 500 zero, zero, so that I have just 5 seconds on this particular comp. I'm going to make it pretty short. Now we do have an advanced tablet um, a tab which you can choose either classic or ray trace 3D. If we were to get into 3D stuff then that would be um, something that you wanted to get the best quality out of with ray traced. But we're not going to do that. Now that I have my first comp I'm going to create a very simple project. I'm going to start off by making a new solid which is a comp size. We can do this with control Y and I'm going to make it a color that's very obviously different. We can also go up to layer, new, and solid and create the same thing. Now with this solid I'm going to create a very simple effect. I'm going to go to simulation and I'm going to use shatter. The reason I'm using this is because this one is one that creates a little bit of rendering that After Effects has to do. Now we can make this a little bit faster or I'm sorry a little bit more intense by changing it to a rendered workflow so we'll see that will actually render it and then also I'm going to add a little bit to it so under the shape I'm going to do repetitions of about 50 and I'm going to make my extrusion depth about 0.5 just to make it a little bit bigger. Um, this way I have a little bit more calculations that are having to happen. Now if you have a fast computer this is fine you can get a pretty quick um, preview but if yours is slowing down then I'd go ahead and leave it on the defaults if you're following along with this. Now the only reason I did this is so that I can make a movie and we can also talk about why we might do proxies later on. So the next thing to do is once you've completed your movie you would go to create or add to render queue. I call this make movie so control M. The render queue by default goes down over here on the bottom left. I like to take it up to the main window. I, I tend to like it up here, but that's just me. Now the first thing we have is our render settings. We can see what the, our current render settings are if we like here, um, but it's best settings by default and there's a couple different options here. I typically use best settings and then I edit these. And the reason why is because there's one thing in here called proxies which I typically turn on and if proxies are being used I like to go ahead and continue to use them. So I usually change this to use current settings. And that will be important later on. The rest of the stuff I pretty much leave alone. You'll see a lot of these like effects, solo switches, color depth, proxies are all current settings which means whatever we see currently in our animation um, is what we'll be rendering. I find it's a little bit funky when you make different choices here because you might have turned off layers and that you don't intend to render and if you say go ahead and turn on everything if you say like all on or all off then that's that can really mess up 
what your render does. Anyway, I usually set that to OK. And the other thing that I like to do is down here where it says Make Template, I usually try and set the movie default to the best with proxies, which is what I just did. Now, I accidentally made a new setting here, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that and hit OK. So now, anytime we make a new movie, and we can delete this with the delete key, come back down here, do Control M, you'll see now it says best with proxies when we go to render this. The next thing we're going to look at is the output module. This output module by default is set to AVI DV NTSC. Boy, that is old school. So I'm going to come down here and I can go to any of these and edit it or I can go down to custom and we can create one right here. So I'm going to go to AVI um, and change this to QuickTime and when I go to format options there's a lot of different codecs. Now I found that with the QuickTime I've got a lot more options for codecs than in the AVI so I, I kinda like to go there. But there's a couple codecs that are really important to know about. One of those codecs is the GoPro Cineform um, which is one of the newest high quality codecs. Really really great. But I'm gonna be looking at an output codec. So H.264 is really the most common high quality codec out there right now. The next thing we can do is change our quality if we want. Um, this is something that I'm not exactly sure what exact quality gives you the best results, but if you have an idea, go ahead and put it in the comments on YouTube. Um, we could also limit the bitrate if we wanted to um, set that to a certain number. That might be somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 kilobytes per second, maybe 8,000 kilobytes per second if we're really trying to get a high quality movie. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here at about 75. hope that's pretty good. I'm going to go to my audio, and in my audio I'm going to typically set that to AAC, Advanced Audio Codec. That's very common with MPEG-4s. Now the next thing that we have here is our video output that we're changing here and you'll see we have RGB and we have alpha. RGB is since we are outputting this as a movie to render as our, our output video RGB is exactly what we want. Um, last thing we have is audio output and that's set to auto which is good meaning that if we have audio it outputs and if we don't it doesn't which is great. We'll click OK um, and you'll see we've just created this custom preset right here but we haven't made it a template yet so I'm gonna make this a template and so I'm now ready to give that a name you'll see it says QuickTime H264 75 is the quality I've got RGB so I'm gonna call this my QuickTime H264 RGB if we want plus audio actually I don't want to put that plus in there. I think I can just say that. QuickTime H264 RGB and I might just go ahead and make this um, set to output so we know that's what it's for. I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to come back to this and the reason why is I'm going to uh, come back and I want to set the default of this to Let's see, movie default, I want to set that to the one that we just made. QuickTime H264 RGB output. Now, we did create a new one just now, and that's okay. And the reason why that we're going to do that is we're actually going to edit this. I'm going to call this QuickTime H264, and this is going to be the RGB scaled. And I'll make it maybe 960 by 540. We're going to do this one as an output that's been edited. So I'm going to do Edit. And here in Resize, I'm going to scale this thing. And I can scale it to other common sizes out there. Or I can just go ahead and do 960 by 540, which means that that's kind of the size that you might use for some of the, uh, let's see, that's, uh, I think it's the iP iPhone or iMovie or something like that. It's one of their size, the ITV, I guess. Anyway, I'm going to click OK, and that's going to be my QuickTime H264 RGB. The next thing that I'm going to do 
is go ahead and render one of these things and just take a look at the fact that I could render two of them at the exact same time. And there is one last thing that we want to look at. If we wanted to add a module to this, I could go composition, add module, output module, and now you'll see that by default we get the output here. So this means I would get an output module that uses QuickTime H.264 as the regular full screen, and then this one H.264 960 by 540. So it'd be scaled down just a little bit. Before we would ever render, one of the things that I would always tell you to do is go to your preferences, general, let's see if it's there, um, default spatial interpolation there, let's see display, here it is, show rendering progress in info panel and flowchart. That is such an important thing. The reason why is because if we start rendering this thing, and let's just find out where we're saving these things. I guess I'm saving it right now on the desktop, so that's fine. I'm going to hit render, and what I want to see is what is going on with this thing and what is taking a long time. Now, it's not really showing me quite as much as I hoped here for my render, which is too bad. But typically, I'd be taking a look at what's going on there. So anyway, I've just rendered this movie. If I were to go to my desktop, now I would be able to find that particular movie, hopefully. Whoa, lots of movies. But here's what I just output. Now, you'll see that there are some quality issues when I go to that. Anyway, the next thing that I would do is, let's just say that the shatter thing, you know, it took a little bit of time. If I made this a lot more complicated, then I might want to go ahead and make what's called a proxy or a pre-comp. The way we do this is select the layer or multiple layers that we want to put inside of its own composition so we can render those now so that when we continue to work we can just reference that video instead of having to do all those calculations again. The way we do this is select that and then you can right click and choose pre-compose or you can do control shift and C and you want to move all those into the new composition um, and pretty much uh, let's call this uh, pre shatter and now if I go back to my project you'll see that we've created a new pre comp a shatter comp now I'm gonna go ahead and make this movie as well in this output module we're gonna change something so I'm gonna make another template and this time I'm gonna call this uh, proxy or actually I'll call it QTI anim 75 and that'll be RGBA or RGB plus which I think RGBA sounds good because that means plus alpha and uh, I'm also gonna call this proxy the reason why is I'm going to edit this now, and we're going to keep QuickTime as the format, but our render will be set proxy afterwards. Now we'll do format options, and we're going to change this to animation codec, which is really one of the best codecs, um, but it's a little bit older. And we'll keep our audio as it is, and that's good. The next thing that we want to do is change our colors to millions of colors plus. Ah, here it is, channels. We want RGB plus alpha. That's very important. The reason why is because since this is going to be a proxy render, we want the alpha that's there. Now we'll hit OK. And you'll see we've called that QT Anim 75 RGBA, and we'll call that proxy. And I'm going to actually just make one more um, change here, and that is the movie proxy default should be set to QT Anim 75. However, I do want to point out that there's a new codec that I hear is pretty good as well, another good option. And I'm going to make a new one again. And this one is pretty much going to be the same, except it's going to use PNG as the video output. And probably just take that quality up. I don't really know if this compresses that much if I even kept it at 75 don't really know but that might be a good thing to test out but it's going to be quick time it's going to set proxy afterwards it's going to be RGB plus alpha millions of colors plus therefore and we're going to do art PNG as our output 
and leave our AAC audio. And this is going to be QT PNG RGBA and this will also be a proxy. Beautiful. Now I can click OK and you'll see that I've got some different modules here. If I wanted to output a module I could go ahead and try that PNG proxy and see if it is larger or smaller than that particular one. Now the benefit of this is if I go ahead and render this thing you'll see that it will complete the render and when it's done it's going to actually add a little checkbox over here on the left hand side when it sets this movie to a proxy. Excellent. So now that's where it's set the proxy. If I go back to the comp where it's being used you'll see that I can scrub through it and what it's actually doing is referencing that original proxy which is really really great. Um, so it makes um, things go a little bit faster as we're working with it. Now where that can get you in trouble is if you have um, some effects to this or something like that that you want to be able to kind of edit. So as I go into the original here's where it says proxy is enabled which means I'm actually reading the, uh, the video right off the hard drive and if I go to edit this effect so here is the effect. I'll go over here to the left. If I wanted to edit this effect and change something about it, like change the bricks to a different type, you'll see I don't actually get that until I turn off the proxy. And once I turn off the proxy, then I'll get the new settings that I've changed, which means I can just work on this one little effect um, by itself. Then when I'm ready to go ahead and render this thing again, of course I'd have to go ahead and re-render it, or I can also right click and I can create a proxy right from here, which means it's going to use basically um, some same things. However, I like the best with proxies and I like to go ahead and make sure that I'm using the same settings so I get the highest quality output. You can kind of set it up so that it will do um, best, but I'd like to render from the main thing and just reset the proxy. That's just the way I do it. Anyway, I hope this was helpful in understanding some of the render settings. Of course, it takes a while just to get used to navigating this, just because um, anything is, it's, it's kind of kludgy when it comes to having to go to this to make a template, but then sometimes you're, it's not just easy to go in and edit this and save those edited those versions as new templates very easy it's a little kludgy i find and uh i guess that's it thanks